Welcome to the Arlington Street Church podcast. Founded in 1729, Arlington Street continues today as a gathering place for progressive people of faith in the greater Boston area and beyond. We are located at the corner of Arlington and Boylston Streets, across from the Public Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. Please visit ASCBoston.org for more information about this historic Unitarian Universalist congregation. Arlington Street Church, gathered in love and service for justice and peace. And the world breathed a collective sigh, not for what is, but for what may now become. These are words from Alex Klingenberg, a Unitarian Universalist poet written just after the presidential inauguration this week. A collective sigh, not for what is, but for what may now become. Many of us wept during the inauguration ceremony, whether in relief at seeing our government lift up values of inclusion and anti-oppression, or in sadness at what our country has been through, or the tears were for the experience of seeing a woman of color sworn in as vice president. The first, Kamala Harris says, but not the last. I didn't cry then. I'm not usually that much of a crier, but I vacillated between joyful cheering and clapping and anxious nail-biting until the president and vice president walked safely into the White House unharmed. No, the crying didn't really start until the next day. The day after the presidential inauguration, the Sikh activist and civil rights attorney Valerie Kaur hosted the kickoff event for what she calls the People's Inauguration, 10 days to activate revolutionary love. Building off the oath of office that we had just seen the president and vice president make, the people's inauguration offers us the chance to make our own commitments, to do our part in healing, reimagining, and rebuilding our country. You can check it out at thepeoplesinauguration.org. It's going on until January 31st with all sorts of powerful and inspiring events. On Thursday, I listened to the live stream of the People's Inauguration on my phone as I drove to an appointment. I heard Valerie tell her story of seeing that this nation would be a more dangerous place for her son with his brown skin than it was for her. You might have heard a speech she gave in 2016 that got something like 40 million views when she said, what if this darkness is not the darkness of the tomb, but of the womb? What if America is not dead, but a country that is waiting to be born? This is a question that Valerie has been asking herself every day since then. And in truth, she says it has been both. There have been days so traumatic that she tasted ash in her mouth. And there were days like January 20th where she saw glimpses of the nation that is wanting to be born an America where all of us are coming together to hold up a vision for the multiracial country that we could be. I felt my throat tighten and tears sting before my eyes. And here was the message of the people's inauguration. This labor of birthing a new nation, it's going to take all of us. We, the people, 
need to be inaugurated into this long labor of healing and reimagining and rebuilding this country. We are building on the progress of history, and we, the people, have continuously pushed the meaning of justice and truth and dignity and equality in this country. We are being offered a moment to reflect on our role in that labor, our role in that American story, which is an, inv in, an invitation I extend to us all today. This inaugural moment is an invitation to ask yourself, what am I willing to commit to? What am I ready to do as we move into this new moment together? Sound government is necessary, Valerie said, and we are going to hold our elected leaders accountable and push for those policies that we need, yes. But what we need in this country to transition is a shift in culture and in consciousness. It's a revolution of the heart. That kind of work is block by block work, is heart to heart work. And that is our work and each of us have a role. You have a role wherever you are, your school, your workplace, your industry, your home, every single container for community needs you to transition it to becoming anti-racist, equitable, sustainable, to becoming the beloved community that Dr. King called us to. So we've got to do this labor with love, Valerie continued, the muscular kind of love that inspired a whole nonviolent movement. My eyes blurred with tears. Here it comes, I thought, and I pulled over onto a side street to keep listening. Four people who had shared their stories on this call were the first to make their oaths. They were invited to put their hands over their hearts and one, another, one after another made their own version of this oath. I, so-and-so, do solemnly vow that I will faithfully execute my role in healing, reimagining, and rebuilding our country, and will, to the best of my ability, expand, protect, and defend dignity, justice, and joy, especially for those who have been unseen, unheard, and undervalued, and that I will do so with love. I just sat in my car and sobbed. Because sound government is necessary, yes. And what we need to transition in this country is a revolution of the heart. And we all have a role to play in it. And there are so many of us willing to take this on. We can make a house called tomorrow. What we bring finally into the new day, every day, is ourselves. And that's all we need to start. That's everything we require to keep going. Let me share with you a story that I think about every election season and that feels especially poignant this year and this week. In the summer of 2012, I went on a pilgrimage trip to Transylvania which is the birthplace of Unitarianism. Toward the end of that trip, my group met with the Unitarian bishop. They get bishops there. 
The bishop shared with us some harrowing stories of what life was like for the Transylvanian people under communism and what it was like for him, a parish minister at the time, trying to minister to his people. He spoke about a constant fear, about how there was a government henchman sitting in his congregation every Sunday, monitoring the sermons to make sure that the minister didn't say anything controversial. I noticed that even though our American tour group members were gasping and empathically nodding along to the stories, the bishop kept a professional and slightly bored expression on his face. He stressed that, yes, it was bad, but the Transylvanian people are looking to the future. After the meeting, I went up to the bishop and introduced myself. Hi, I'm Joanna, and I'm in seminary myself studying to be a minister, and I couldn't help but wonder. When communism fell, when you were finally able to practice your religion and preach freely, what did you preach to your people that Sunday? Before my eyes, I saw the bishop's professional veneer crack, and tears came to his eyes. I preached about democracy, he said, about how now that we had it, we needed to earn it. I preached that democracy is not something that comes down from above to rescue us. It is something that we have to work at and work for over and over again. And I'm crying now, the bishop continued, as I paused to take this in, because this is something that my people still need to learn. It has been more than 20 years since the communist ruled, and my people still expect the government to solve all of their problems for them. We need to learn that we must make the change ourselves. We breathe a collective sigh of relief, not for what is, but for what may now become. Democracy is not just how we elect our leaders, it's what we do after the leaders are sworn in. We all have a role in healing, reimagining, and rebuilding our nation. We know that change doesn't occur from any one person single-handedly or overnight. We know that change occurs when we do our own small work and join with others to be a part of the great work. We are all building this house called tomorrow, building it on a foundation of hope with walls that we hold up for each other. We may not agree on what the house should look like in the end, but we build it one brick at a time, doing the next right thing and the next. If you've attended Arlington Street Church for a while now, you may have heard us sing Blessed Unrest by Zoe Toby. And blessed unrest is a concept that I invoke for us all. To be in a state of blessed unrest is to be awake to all of the crises going on in our world. You have no veils, no illusions about the state of things, but you also see what's possible. You see a hopeful possibility for the future and are inspired to take action on that vision with other people who are also awake. This is what our Unitarian Universalist faith calls us to do. And we can do that together. 
gathering with our congregations gives us an opportunity to be among people who are awake, who hold no illusions that it's going to take some struggle before we see the changes that we're working for, but who do what has to be done again and again. Together, we can receive nourishment on that journey to justice. We can know ourselves as part of a community who see the world as it could be, part of a great chain of big-hearted people who care about the earth, about a world where rights could be respected, children would be cherished, and peace would prevail. We gather to be a part of something larger than ourselves because our dreams are often bigger than our lifetimes. Beloveds, what is your hope for this home that we build together? We know that whatever we build will not only be good, it will be better. May it make us proud. Amen. And for our benediction, I invite you to put your hands over your heart, either in namaste or one over the other. We share these words from poet laureate Amanda Gorman, because how could we not? And yes, we are far from polished, far from pristine, but that doesn't mean we are striving to form a union that is perfect. We are striving to form a union with purpose, to compose a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of man, let the globe, if nothing else, say this is true, that even as we grieved, we grew, that even as we hurt, we hoped, that even as we tired, we tried. But one thing is certain, if we merge mercy with might and might with right, then love becomes our legacy and change our children's birthright. So let us leave behind a country better than the one we were left with. For there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Let us keep this faith, beloveds, and pass it on. The service begins when the service ends. Go with peace and with love. Amen. Where you go, where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. For your people are my people. Your people are mine. Your Please visit ASCBoston.org for more information about this historic Unitarian Universalist congregation. Arlington Street Church, gathered in love and service for justice and peace.